So let's talk about nuclear proliferation of nuclear power plants. Uh, what are the obstacles to proliferation? Well, there are three. There are the physical, um, the physical problems with nuclear proliferation, the uh, mechanical problems, and the societal problems. The, uh, all three of them work against um, creating nuclear weapons from nuclear power plants. Um, now let's talk about these in order. Firstly is... Uh, physical uh, barriers to nuclear proliferation from nuclear power plants, at least the ones we have today. Uh, I'll, get in, I'll get into food fueled reactors in a sequel video sometime you know, in a couple weeks, I guess. Um, now the physical barriers are uh, all of the other stuff in a nuclear power plant other than uranium-235 and plutonium-239. This is uranium-238, which is 94.4-95% uh, of all of a nuclear fuel rod. and all the fission products, you can find a list uh, plenty of places online, and all of the other kinds of plutonium made in a nuclear power plant. Because nuclear power plutonium is only 60% uh, fissile. That's a rough estimate, but it's 56% uh, plutonium-239, a couple percent plutonium-241. The rest of it can't be fission. Uh, it would just absorb the neutron, turn into a different kind of plutonium. Uh, so in that way, it would be like trying to make a bomb, except half of the trinitrotoluene you replace with water. It would just, it would be useful. It would be useless. It's like trying to make a bomb out of natural uranium, let's say. Now the second <coughs> is mechanical problems with proliferation. Uh, firstly, you don't, <coughs> firstly, the fuel is solid, meaning that chemistry is way harder than if you had fluid fuel. Um, this means that if you do uh, decide to make weapons from a power plant, you would have to melt down the fuel and, I guess, do some pyroprocessing, a nifty t uh, technique invented by argon scientists, uh, and that would separate out the uranium and plutonium from the, from the fission products, but it would also uh, guarantee that you get all the kinds of uranium, all the kinds of plutonium, and Neptunium and Americium and Carium and a couple others, but uh, basically <coughs> you'd still have the same product problem as earlier, except now at least you don't have to deal about the uh, deal with the fission products. And isotopic separation is harder than that. Uh, that's just chemical separation. That's easy, uh, but it's going to be way harder to make something that is actually useful for weapons. We've developed uranium enrichment enough so that it's at least moderately cheap, but plutonium en en enrichment is not really developed as well because we never really needed it. We just used fast spectrum reactors to make plutonium for weapons and uh, and uh, just left it at that. Uh, Fast spectrum reactors, uh, mind you, that would that were only like connected to army bases if connected to any electrical grids at all. Uh, so, additionally, you what else? I know there was another technical reason that proliferation from a nuclear power plant was hard. I just can't really think of it right now. Uh, well, again, if I think about it, I'll put it in the next video. Um, so the third, uh, the third obstacle to proliferation would be a societal one. People would not take kind. People would. Well, it's not that they would. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't take kindly to it. But people aren't stupid. They would. They would be able to recognize. Hey, my power plant just went down, and I'm not, and I'm not getting electricity. That seems suspicious. And even if they don't suspect the government of it, which you know, why wouldn't they? Uh, if it's unscheduled for not not for maintenance or anything, you know, uh, if they don't do that, then <coughs> or rather, if it's not said that that's the uh, case, then people are going to get a bit suspicious, uh, especially if it uh, goes down and goes up. Fairly quickly. Um, now this is less a problem for solid field reactors because you can just take out the fuel rods and put new ones in. But it is definitely going to be a problem if you want to do it with a molten salt reactor. Um, even then, <coughs> uh, the public also wouldn't really take too kindly to you actually building the weapons in the first place because, well, people don't really like to see nuclear weapons. And I guess I can agree with them. I don't. I don't think they're. I think they've been exaggerated uh, quite a lot, but you know, it's 
not really that it's not really that much of a problem for people to exaggerate that i can see why i just don't think it's correct but you know they're allowed to uh, but yeah people would be up in arms about it of course the government would have uh, slightly bigger arms but still they would they would absolutely just destroy the united states government or whoever's actually operating this so um yeah there's at least three or four reasons as to why proliferation from power plants wouldn't work uh chemical reasons also known as physical reasons uh te technical reasons and societal reasons and governments listen to their countries i know you might not think that but they do because because they want to get a bit of that uh, re-election, uh, a slice of that re-election cake. So if they do something that's completely unpopular with, you know, over half of the populace, they're not going to get re-elected. So they generally follow uh, the actions that the country wants them to take. If the country says don't build nuclear weapons, well, they're, they're probably going to build them anyway, but <clears throat> they'll uh, keep it as covert as possible and not take them from power plants. Well, not take them from uh, power plants while their fuel is running, which means that they would, that if they do, for some reason, take them from power plants, despite it not being isotopically uh, correct for how much plutonium or uranium, plutonium-239 or uranium-235 is actually in the uh, mass of isotopes they just got. Uh, oh, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh yeah, if they somehow do uh, decide to do that, they're still gonna, you know, they're gonna try to get it from an, a government-owned and operated uh, power plant that's not connected to the national grid, and uh, preferably one that uh, that's in the fast spectrum so that they get as, ma as much useful stuff as possible and they don't need to do as much chemistry, because... Uh, yeah, uh, isotopic enrichment is... <clears throat> I don't know if I've been driving this point in uh, far enough. It's really hard. It's pretty much one of the main reasons people uh, decided to develop breeder reactors in the first place, other than uranium, uh, uranium stock wasn't proven as, as well yet. Additionally, I completely forgot to mention the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which uh, specifically... Uh, puts this into law that you cannot make nuclear weapon from the uh, fuel uh, from inside of a power plant. 